the Glendale Redevelopment Agency, was posted on Thursday, February 21st, 2008, on the bulletin board outside City Hall. Thank you. Uh, do we have minutes? I don't think we have minutes. No. All right. So let's move on to the next item. Next item is oral communication. Discussion is limited to items not a part of this agenda. Each speaker is allowed five minutes. Members of the Redevelopment Agency may question or respond to the speaker, but there will be no debate or decision. The matter may be referred to staff through the executive director for an investigation and a report. All right. Now, Mr. Milano, you're being very tricky here. You've indicated you wanted to speak to agenda item number five, which happens to be oral communications. Is, are they one and the same, or are you trying to squeeze an extra few minutes out of us here? Yeah, can I get 10 minutes now? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, members of the Redevelopment Agency and City staff, my name is Herbert Molano. I want to talk briefly about the process by which the environmental impact reports are go through the process of being vetted, to say, by the community or by those individuals who represent us in the commissions. I was troubled very much by the, um, the manner in which uh, the environmental impact reports were submitted and defended, if I can call it that, at the Planning Commission meeting. And this particular project that I'm talking about is the Verdugo Gardens project. But I also know that the City Center 2 project was never really presented to the Parking and, Trans and Transportation Commission. And I wonder why. These are not small projects. These are projects that eventually will have 400, 600 additional residents. And you would imagine that at the very least, that particular commission was vested with the prerogative to review these things would be included in the process. Now, they are included in the process. And the last time an EIR went to them, they actually took a very good look at the uh, tandem parking situation. And I don't know if it's a coincidence, but the other projects that came after that were never presented to them included a significant amount of tandem parking. I wonder if there's a relationship there. But what is the problem is that not only did they not get to meet half the time last year, but the environmental impact reports were not presented to them for their review. Why shouldn't they review it? If there's anything of significance for them to look at, it's, it's this report it gives us the trends, the statistics of the city. You know, it gives the level of service all of the things that are pertinent for them to look at and that they can evaluate. But it was not. The staff made a decision on their own that they didn't need to. And I think that's wrong. Look, there are issues on the environmental impact report having to do with the parks and <coughs> recreation needs. But parks and recreation are not involved in that process. Why not? There are issues having to do with the use of water, for example. And the Glendale Water and Power Commission is not involved in the process either. So. What, why is it that we have these commissions there? What is their role, if not, for them to be the eyes and ears of the public, looking at these documents, and then giving you their feedback with regard to how they study those issues? You know, I think we definitely need to review the manner and the process by which you engage the public through these commissions to ensure that these environmental reports are really vetted properly. And I really mean that. Because, you know, as I see it right now, I'm pretty much the only person really reading the documents and getting an assessment of what they are and then bringing it to your attention pretty much after the fact. And when I do, I just simply get a chorus, five people singing the same song. And then when I sit down, there is no debate. So generally during oral communication <coughs> today, there is no debate. Um, what is the other word, Mr. Howard? Um, yeah. But yet, once I sit down, there is really is no debate, because all of you are basically on the same side. And I thought debate required for another side and another viewpoint to be discussed. There is no discussion. And that's the problem. And so I don't think it is fair that after I sit down, all of you take a position and sing the same song all on one side of the issue. That's not debate. So that is the reason why sometimes I feel frustrated when I come back. Believe me, I have a, it's not that I don't appreciate what the city is doing. But when we do come in front of you to discuss an issue that is relevant, that you give us a true assessment of the state of traffic, for example, in many of our major roads and, and connector streets, that we get a proper assessment as to where we are today vis-a-vis -vis where we were last year and where we were before. Because my experience is significantly different from the statements made on those EIRs. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Mr. Milano. Uh, we have another speaker card from Greg Astorian. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Greg Astorian. No debate necessary after I'm done. Um, if uh, I Or decision. <laughs> Um, Greg Astorian with Remax. Um, a few days ago, I'm a member of uh, Urban Land Institute. And a few days ago, I was um, meeting with with, with uh, uh, some of the executive uh, uh, folks at the institute, and a question came up of what is the significance of uh, significance of smart growth? Are there any principles for smart growth? And then, more importantly, what I wanted to find out is whether or not any one of these projects that is um, underway in downtown and in general, downtown specific plan, whether or not it adheres with the principles of smart growth. And the answer was a resounding yes. And I'm only going to cover a couple of two or three of these ten principles and to uh, actually for public's benefit to show how the DSP and the projects following suit do really fall in the category of smart growth. <coughs> Number one principle, the first principle, development is economically viable and preserves open space and natural resources. Now, uh, we have gone over the fact that this council has mandated the purchase and the completion of the consummation of this purchase of 26 million square feet of hillside, prime hillside property. In effect, you have put out uh, off of development rolls, 1,200 single-family homes. Instead, you have directed that growth in downtown uh, area, and what we have on board right now is about eight or, eight or 900 condominiums that are going to be built. We have established that the use of water in the case of these condominiums versus single-family homes is 65% less. So that, in my book, and also as far as ULI is concerned, is considered smart growth. Um, we as well are certifying a lot of these uh, projects under uh, the Green Council of Buildings LEED certification. By that, uh, for example, to give you an example, on the gold level, you need to recapture roof water and divert it to um, uh, watering your uh, um, um, uh, landscaping. You need to recapture gray water, clean it, and divert it to um, landscaping. So there is a lot of good stuff that is going to happen with the LEED certification of these projects. Number two, was this land use planning a comprehensive, integrated, and regional? Yes, it was. In fact, about a month ago, I was at the ICSC mixed use conference, and when they would see that I was carrying uh, uh, the name of the city, uh, Glendale, uh, of course, I was uh, from uh, uh, there attending on behalf of Remax, they would come to me and ask me about the downtown specific plan. So, this plan, the reputation of it, has gone further down city of Glendale. Uh, and I can go on and on and on and on. One of the uh, issues of smart growth is redevelopment of infill housing, brownfield sites. Obviously, we don't have brownfield sites. And obsolete buildings is actively pursued. Obsolete building like the source security building that, as we are speaking, the demolition is going forward and is going to turn into a terrific asset for the downtown. Uh, with that, uh, I will finish. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Historian. Any comments? Can we debate that? <laughs> uh, we certainly can uh, have discussion or ask questions. <laughs> I know you're kidding. Okay, I have no further cards, no other cards for uh, oral communications, so I will close oral communications. Uh, Mr. City Clerk, could I have the next item? Agency member or staff comment? Motion to move to adjourn. Second. Thank you. We stand adjourned at 3 0. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, we'll do joint uh, council and housing next. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the joint public meeting of the Glendale City Council and the Glendale Housing Authority for February 26th, 2008. And we have the role.